Well, it is believed that COVID-19 will change a lot of things in the world. And the banking sector will be another critical space that will not be forgiven in terms of how things will be. Would I still have the opportunity to walk to that teller and withdraw my money? All things will change. I visited one ATM of a commercial bank and they said that for all those who have had their credit cards, debit card expired, you don't need to come to the bank. They will do an automatic rollover. In terms of uh, closing that deal with the commercial bank, would I still have that face-to-face -face interaction? What about regulation as well? How would things look like in terms of laws and regulation? Recently, the Bank of Ghana announced that they're actually asking commercial banks to halt the payment of dividend to shareholders because they want to ensure that there's improved liquidity so that they can extend monies rather to their clients. Well, these are some of the things that we've got us thinking about what will be the future of banking when this coronavirus actually ends, or maybe it is contained. Nana Otua Champo is a banking consultant. He's taught in the banking college. He's worked with a lot of banks. And there's no other person to have this discussion than to have him in our studio for this discussion in terms of the future of banking. He's, he appreciates the banking sector so much, serve on several boards. So what has to do with banking and independent commentary on it, he might be the best place person to do that. Well, on Vazoom, we'll also be joining with Vish Shagbo. He's an accountant firm, worked on a lot of commercial banks. And so he will tell us what are the numbers looking at. They recently put together a report on the commercial banks and how they are doing and how they are faring and all those things. We're getting some more from him. And also, businesses, what are they saying? What are they expecting? The chief executive of the Union of Ghana Industries, Chima Kobwa, would also be joining us. And I appreciate your time so much uh, for joining us. And you never get tired of talking about banking, right? No. <laughs> I, I dream banking, I sleep banking, and uh, I eat banking. <laughs> Has this then crossed your mind about what is going to happen to banking going forward because of COVID-19? Well, um, yes, we, we have been thinking a lot about it because banking is a security conscious um, industry mm -hmm. in that we take um, the confidentiality of customers so seriously that one would have thought uh, this wouldn't you know, happen. Mm -hmm. So right now, <clears throat> what the banks are doing is, in fact, they are investing a lot in encryption and um, verification of uh, identities so so that you'll be ready to come back to, you know the unforeseen mm. so banking is not going to be the same as it was before uh, December 2019 post whenever uh, we get if we're out, able we to be manage different. this thing well, some we, are we, saying we, that COVID-19 yeah. will still be with us uh, just like influenza, chickenpox, and all the rest, until a vaccine is found. Yes, but then we've been promised that vaccine will be found by September. So mm -hmm. hopefully by September. Quite optimistic, yeah. Nana. <laughs> I am, I am, yes. So, 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 so for many, for the, for the normal banking uh, thing, some are saying that a lot of the banks are trying to move a lot of transactions, virtual e-commerce, online. Uh, would that be the immediate shock that I witness? as a depositor, as a consumer of banking products? Yeah. In fact, the process started some years ago, what we call digitalization, where yeah. um, instead of the analog physical system, we felt that we'd be able to do it digitally. Um, but the pace, we didn't feel it was so urgent until uh, this pandemic dawned on us. And then we realized that now it is urgent. We've got to fasten the pace. Uh, because we felt there was a social capital in getting people to work together as a team in the office, mm -hmm. uh, only to realize now that we don't have a choice, but rather to let people work independently uh, from home. So uh, it wasn't something that was anticipated, but as, not, as far as technology is concerned, uh, it's something that has started before. And what COVID has done is to 
um, catapult it in, you know, into a different phase altogether. Mm. Now, um, the artificial intelligence, which is assisting the digitization in banking, uh, has been fast-tracked, yeah. and, and yeah. now a lot of things are happening um, you know, remotely instead of physically being in the banking mm -hmm. hall or uh, the banking premises. So if I get you right, one of the immediate shocks would be about um, in terms of moving a lot of things into the commerce space and virtual in terms of uh, withdrawals. Uh, recently, the Bank of Ghana again tried to motivate a lot of the commercial banks by waiving charges on electronic transactions so that that could again um, challenge people to do more of online transactions. I mean, you, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, there was talk of um, doing away with checks in, mm. in the UK. Yeah. And then they, they, they came, turned around and said, no, we can't at this stage. But now nobody will tell you that, you know, uh, you got to do things electronically. Mm. Now Ghana started with gifts, trying to um, go cashless, to have a cashless society where we are using cash uh, less and less. Now, nobody will tell you that. It's better to use the cashless system mm. than the fiscal cash because we have been advised that even when you touch cash, you got to sanitize mm. not only um, your hands but probably notes as well because mm. you don't know who has touched it. So I think the um, idea of the, the, the technology having an effect on banking is real. Mm. And uh, sooner than later, less and less cash will be uh, used in the system, and rather you will go digital. Mm. And if you are paying for uh, goods and services, you'll be using your card rather mm. than going to draw physical mm. cash mm. to mm. do it. Yeah. Let, me, let me try and bring in Visha Shagbo. He's a senior country partner at PwC Ghana, and he's been working a, lo a lot of commercial banks in the country in terms of their books, engaging them, restructuring uh, their operations and all the rest. And he has a deeper understanding in the workings of commercial banks in the country. Vish, thank you so much for joining us on PM Express Business Edition. And let me ask you for Welcome, you, George. did you ever thought that one day, uh, in terms of the human interaction, Commercial banks will now be looking at a lot of means to review that. Oh, well, you know, George, as Nana has already said, um, we've been on a journey as far as uh, digitization and electronic transactions are concerned in this country, uh, in the banking industry, for some time. So actually, it's no surprise and it's nothing new. Uh, just as Nana said, what the situation has led to is an acceleration of, of that effort. Uh, and to be honest, I think that um, maybe apart from one or two specific areas, uh, as far as banking operations are concerned, uh, the issue is more on the consumer, or on the customer side, rather than on the bank side. Because banks have, some, for some time now, been working towards uh, a digital or electronic way of doing business. Uh, that had already been identified as one of the ways that banks would gain competitive advantage. Uh, but now it has moved from being a means of competitive advantage to uh, more or less a necessity. Uh, so in answer to your question, it's not really a surprise, but it's something that has, uh, uh, has demanded an acceleration of that effort. In, in terms of investment as well, uh, again, because you deal with these uh, commercial banks, do you think that they are ready for this new phase of banking because of what coronavirus is doing? Well, it depends on what you mean by investment. I, I think that um, uh, banks have invested and they are reasonably well equipped. Uh, what will change is how they do business with their customers and how they monitor and track their exposure uh, to different segments of, uh, of the economy and different customers that are operating in those segments because the historical uh, assumptions that we've all been used to, that the banks have been used to, that they used to track and monitor the exposures, are now all going to change. And uh, as we sit here today, nobody's even quite sure in which direction those changes are going to uh, go. 
So I think that's more the issue. But in terms of investment, I think investments have been made, whether you're talking about digitization or whether you're talking about shoring up the bank's own uh, resources to be able to withstand some of these challenges that we foresee. Mm -hmm. So do I get from you that with respect to these commercial banks, um, they have always been ready for this unforeseen, use the word devil called coronavirus, and how it's going to change everything? Yes, I, I wouldn't say they've always been ready, but uh, I think what we have seen over the last uh, two to three years, uh, as the whole industry has been uh, strengthened by the various reforms that started in 2017, by, uh, let, let's call it good fortune, or by some uh, foresight by policymakers or regulators, we find ourselves in a situation where the banks are indeed stronger to be able to deal with uh, this this challenge that has uh, crept upon us. So um, so today, I think uh, they are ready, but it's not a case that they've always been ready. It's something that has happened by virtue of the uh, steps and the reforms that have taken place over the last two to three years. You, you are into auditing. Are you now looking at remote auditing, or you are still going to come go to the offices of these commercial banks to audit? You'll be going to the well, firms of these uh, um, their customers to still audit their books? Well, well, it's an interesting question, George, because uh, it, uh, alongside the rest of the world, in actual fact, our business has also been going through a digitization phase. Nothing to do with COVID-19. It's something that we started uh, years ago. So today, there are aspects of our business. Uh, if you look at the audit side of the business, there's aspects of it that can be done electronically uh, by having access to data, having access to systems, uh, and you can you can actually do your audit that way. But there are some things that today still require some physical presence. For example, if you have to do a cash count uh, at the end of the year, yeah. uh, you have to go and count the cash in yeah. the vault. Uh, you can't do that electronically. So there's one or two areas that we still have to scratch our heads and think about how maybe one day we can get into an electronic way of, uh, of doing. So we're, we're, we're on the same journey. We're not there 100%, but it's work in progress. Fisher, I, I, I also want to get back, I'll get back to you, but the last thought on, on, from you is that there are, there are some who have argued that maybe nothing will change. It will just put in precautionary measures to avoid the spread because the human factor is critical. I remember way back in university, there was a lecturer who shared data with us that sort to suggest that most people still wanted the face-to-face -face interaction. They feel more connected to a bank when they see the fiscal evidence. And there was a bank that even went to the rural village to do mobilization with a van. If I can literally break down the thing was that the women in the village were complaining that the bank has taken their money away. And because they connected the fiscal evidence that this is where our money is, maybe nothing will change. Uh, George, I think that uh, something will change. It will not change immediately. Uh, as you know from the work that you do, I mean, over the years, banks have actually moved gradually from what we call the brick and mortar way of doing business to more electronic channels. You're absolutely right. Banking, like other service uh, sectors or professional services, is a relationship-based uh, business. So there's a need to connect with the customer. Um, so uh, yeah, absolutely. Things will not change uh, entirely, I, I don't believe. Uh, but there certainly will be some changes because uh, once we are forced, as we have been, to contend with the issues uh, of COVID-19, uh, and as we are all today working in some way or form remotely and dealing with our clients and customers remotely, it will become an acceptable way of working, I believe. But it will not be a 100% uh, situation where you have no physical interaction uh, or face-to-face -face interaction with your customers and clients. There will be some of that, but I do believe it will be reduced uh, much, much more than it has been uh, previously. Mm. Mr. Shagbo is the country, uh, senior country partner at PwC Ghana. I'll be getting back to you, so you must still have to uh, still connect with us via 
a virtual platform, which is something that I believe you've been doing nowadays more uh, than the face-to-face -face interaction. Yes. Nana, All right, George. Yeah, I'll stand by. <laughs> <laughs> Nana, some will also say that she did start with regulation in terms of the changes that we are going to look forward to with respect to COVID-19 and the changes that we should expect in the banking sector. In fact, um, as uh, Vish said, the changes in the banking sector started um, years ago. Uh, it might have been slow, but then the pandemic has effectively turbocharged the mm. growth of the internet and mm. it's being used more. Now, the returns that are made to the regulator um, has gradually moved away from paper-based to electronic-based. Mm. You know, um, there are literally hundreds that mm. they have to uh, report regularly, either daily, we, uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, and so on. Mm. Now, these have all been digitized, and mm. it's made it easier. Now, if you take uh, AML, anti-money laundering, mm. uh, re 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 returns. Recently, you had they some issues also, in the European Union. Yes, sorry. The, the, that has also been digitized, and mm. all the, the returns that the institutions have to make are also um, on digital platforms. So, yes, the, the, the change in the banking sector has been ongoing, but by all means, the pandemic has really you know, catapulted it as into the future. Now, now, hold on there. Let me bring in the association of Ghana industries and businesses, industries, they say, are the lifeblood of the economy. And in terms of banking, you can talk about banking without talking about clients, depositors, and businesses. So, Chuma Kabua is chief executive of the association of Ghana industries. And let's gauge the expectation of businesses and industries. Seth, thank you so much for joining us on PM Express Business Edition. What? Seth, thank you so much for joining us on PM Express Business Edition. In terms of expectation, what are you looking forward to as a businessman? Because there's been talk about the fact that things are going to change because of COVID-19 when it comes to banking. Sorry, we lost uh, Seth Chuma Koboy, the chief executive. And now we're talking about um, the regulation. Yes. Have you seen that things are being put in place to deal with the expected changes because of this pandemic? Yes, yes, um, quite, quite, quite a lot. As I said, the returns to start with um, are, are changing. The, the way the regulator also relates. Uh, for instance, uh, Vish also mentioned it, that what happened from 2017 probably has been a blessing in disguise because if they had not uh, well capitalized the banks and with this pandemic probably the, the worst would have happened. Mm -hmm. So now the, bank, the banks are very ready um, and uh, stronger than before. Uh, that doesn't mean that there are no problems when it comes to the customers that they are serving. Mm. Now they've had to give moratoriums to, for uh, loan repayment. Uh, they are giving concessionary loans to businesses so that they can uh, uh, kickstart the, their business again. So um, in terms of the activities that the banks are doing, uh, it's, it's pretty much under control. Mm. And I think mm. going mm. forward. Now, now let me bring better. in the Association of Ghana mm -hmm. Industries. Industries, businesses, they are the lifeblood of uh, banking. Mr. Chuma Kobwa, for you as a businessman for industries, what are you looking forward to in terms of the way things might have to change because of COVID-19? Or you think that, listen, let's put in place the record protection because we need that face-to-face -face interaction with our bankers? Well, thank you very much, George. And sorry for not being able to join you on Zoom. Um, as I said, I'm not at home. I'm not in the office. I'm just driving through. So uh, I needed to clear that. Yes. Uh, as as far as expectation is concerned, um, for us, we want business to uh, continue as usual. Uh, we are aware that as a result of the COVID situation, uh, businesses have really slowed down, uh, and it's still with banking transactions as well. So, therefore, it's affecting businesses in general. The problem we have is that the large sector of our members are SMEs. And when we have a lot of SMEs and we are dealing with SMEs, 
electronic business is affected a little bit. So in this situation, much as we want business to, to uh, continue in the normal way for us, we know that most of our SME businesses do not have the electronic means of working very efficiently. So that is going to be a bit of a challenge. But apart from that, a lot of uh, generally our big companies, our business are also electronic-based. And, and therefore, we think that it is very possible for us to do business uh, around that. We are transacting business with um, people from, uh, I mean, we are transacting business on a regular basis uh, with, um, using electronic means, and therefore that should continue. There are different aspects of our business. One aspect is cash collection that the uh, banks would do, uh, collect. That one should go on, and I don't think you should have too much problem with that. The other aspect is to do with loans and, and other transactions. Those ones, I don't see how the COVID situation should affect it significantly because a lot of the transaction is done on phone. It's a, it's a paperwork, so you send in your request. Uh, if it's a business plan, if it's your cash flow statement, all the documents can be sent and it can be reviewed by the bankers and uh, decisions are made by the credit committee. So those aspects will continue without difficulty. And, and therefore, businesses shouldn't suffer from that side. Aspects where they are monitoring your facility, they want to engage you consistently, those aspects will be affected. So there are certain areas that we need to look at. But I think that uh, the, the major part, which for us, the fact that business is generally uh, slowing down because of the COVID situation. So the cash flow generation is weak, bank deposits will go down. And in that case, banks may not have enough deposits to even lend to our customers, uh, our businesses. So those are the aspects that we need to look at. But uh, the actual transaction, the effect shouldn't be too much among the medium to large scale companies. But for the SMEs, uh, I'm sure we'll stand on perhaps technology and we'll see some improvement in that area as well. No, no, um, so Chumakawa, well, that is an area I really want to um, uh, dig further because some will also say that how prepared are your members, the SME, for this? Because some will see that it's a necessary evil. Yeah, even though uh, data technology is a big challenge for a lot of firms, don't you see that you should uh, invest more, uh, readjust your inflows and investment and capital expenditure, maybe, to ensure that you don't miss out on that interaction and tapping into that uh, commercial bank? You are certainly right, and indeed, our members do not have a choice. It is, it is the way of doing business now. Indeed, it has come to say. Already, technology was advancing, people were adapting it, but it wasn't as critical as it is now. So I believe from now, people are going to be investing more in technology and improve their way of doing business using electronic means. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I believe that we should be getting ready. But if you ask whether we are ready, I know that we are fully ready. At the medium to large scale level, the members are uh, uh, electronically inclined. But at the SME level, we have a serious problem there. But we can't. Uh, and one, that's one way that associations like us are playing, that we educate our members, we, we, we train them in the area of technology, we ask them to uh, invest in technology, ensure that you have servers, you have computers, you have systems that enable you to do business uh, electronically, uh, how you can make payments, you know, without necessarily going to the banking uh, hall and all that. So there's a lot of education to be done. And then actual support to enable them to get really prepared for, for this kind of transaction. So I agree that we, we don't have the choice of uh, going forward. Uh, people have to be educated and they have to really get ready. And as I said, at the medium to last year level, this is really to be as usual, except that the challenge is the cash flow generated by the banks to be able to online and then do the re, um, uh, regular transactions without any hit, with, with funds not coming in as regularly as possible. Uh, the, the, those are the challenging areas that we probably will have. Mr. Kobwa, do I get from you that your biggest fear might be credit extension or the fact that? <coughs> maybe some sectors will suffer as these banks also review their credit portfolios and to see 
where it will be profitable to extend credit? Yes, yeah, it is a, one area that is of great concern because at this moment, credit normally goes to where business are booming. And if you look at the entire sectors of the economy, today, one sector that is doing well are the consumable because you have consumed food, uh, the basic items like toiletry, uh, soap, um, all things that relate to our normal daily consumption, you have a good business there. So I can imagine that banks will be uh, sending more credit to that, that uh, area. But other areas that are long-term in nature, and, and the nature of the product that they produce, the fact that the demand for it has gone down, Naturally, when banks are evaluating such applications, they will look at it, cash flow generation, uh, and the projections in terms of income and all that. When all that happens, the dependency to extend credit to that area should be difficult. So I can imagine that credit portfolios will change, and, and, and areas that have high demand for credit will, will get it. But other areas will suffer, and that is where interventions become necessary, because those areas may be equally critical for the development of the economy, and we should not lose that of it. So we need to look at the entire range of things, so those that are most critical, and then uh, those that are demand, and for whose reason banks will support, so mm. that we get fair success and equity. Mm. This is Chumaka, but hold on, I'm not done with you. I'll get back to you. But let me get to Nana in studio here. So Nana, do I get that in terms of regulation, uh, we are getting there by ensuring that the players and everybody is in line to deal with or manage this COVID-19? Oh, yes. Um, from the banking sector perspective, the, as I said, the idea of digitization started some time ago, and for regulators, they, they, they are also, um, uh, you know, ahead of the curve, and they have been ensuring that returns are made digitally. And, you know, when the COVID pandemic started here, they, uh, since then, Bank of Ghana has issued uh, five directives. The first one was to get banks to put in place their um, contingency, you know, measures to ensure that it will be business as usual. Uh, then came the idea of social distancing, so they had mm. to work through and let some people do shift system. Mm. You are on one week, you are off uh, the following week, and so on. So, yes, uh, pretty much the regulator, uh, from my perspective, has been mm. in control. Yeah. Mr. Visha Shagbo, um, from you, you, you engage both the banks and consumers as well. For health reasons, yes, I'll be compelled to do that. But do you think that the consumers of banking products and services are ready for this change? I don't think I am, Mr. Shego. Well, I, I'm not sure which change you're referring to, but if you're referring to the, um, the digital way of, of transacting as opposed to going into your branch or having a meeting with your... Uh, bank uh, representatives, uh, then I think that, yes, most people have actually, at least uh, out of the necessity of the situation, have accepted that this is the way to go. Uh, and to the extent that it's working, um, I think that post the, the crisis, if we ever get there, I think that um, it will continue to be an acceptable way of, of engaging. There is a challenge, like Seth mentioned, with the uh, the businesses that are in the small to medium sector category. Uh, but like I said in my opening remarks, I think that um, the whole digitization discussion is more on the customer or consumer side as far as that sector is concerned, rather than on the bank, on the bank side. Because the banks have made those investments over the years. Uh, it's the customers uh, and the counterparts that they're trying to do business with in many cases that do have to catch up. But this situation hopefully will propel us to, uh, to, to that solution. Mr. Shah, but do, I, do you think that SMEs could be the biggest casualties in this change that we are seeing because of this pandemic? Because, yes, the change is happening, but whether you are also ready to tap into it and benefit from it is another thing altogether. 
Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, I think that's a valid point, George. Uh, as to whether there will be casualties, we all hope not, because uh, as you know, uh, the economy of Ghana is largely driven by these small and medium-sized uh, companies and enterprises. That is why a lot of the measures that uh, Bank of Ghana has put in place are targeted to give relief to businesses that are operating in that sector. And that's separate from the broader uh, policies that government as a whole is putting in place uh, to, to shore up the economy, which again is targeted mostly at that sector. So uh, the hope is that um, the sector will be able to withstand the challenges. Uh, obviously, with a situation like this, there'll be some winners and some losers. Uh, but overall, uh, the hope is that they will survive or the majority of them will survive because that's the only way that this economy is going to uh, get through this. Mr. Shekba, I raised the, the, the casualty angle about not because of in perpetuity that, that they're going to be cleared out, but as to their readiness to meet the fact that, listen, you're no longer going to walk into the banking hall. A lot of the banks are moving everything to the virtual platforms. The ability to also invest in similar platforms to equally benefit from this, some would say it's a big challenge. Oh, you know, I, I, I would suggest that it's not such a big challenge. I mean, these are business people. Right. And business people are generally innovative types. And when they see a challenge that they need to rise to, I'm sure that they can. Uh, if you're concerned about the level of capital investment that is required, um, I think that fortunately these days, the cost of um, electronic uh, equipment and electronic facilities that allows you to do business electronically is it, it, not over the top, so to speak. So uh, at least uh, my hope is that most of them will be able to reorganize themselves quickly uh, and not lose too much ground in terms of uh, the effects of this pandemic and their continued relationships and interactions with their bankers. I'll come back to the student, Gib, and I want to do something with all of you in terms of doing the checklist. Uh, Nana, we've been talking about what would change going forward. Uh, what is your first five checklist in terms of what would change? Would it be deposit mobilization? Would it be relationship banking, uh, suffering? Would it, be, um, would it be extending of credits? Uh, what do you think are your first two or three areas that would think that, listen, post-COVID-19, even if today we get a vaccine, you believe that that is going to change going forward? Well, um Quite a, quite a number, mm. but the first or amongst the list will be the idea, as uh, the CEO of Barclays UK said, of putting 7,000 people in a building is no longer going to be the norm. Uh, now, whether we like it or not, work from home. Be, working from home mm. is, going, is going to be so that, that uh, will part change of the process. More know. of these people, yes. that is something yes. that is going to change uh, in banking going banking forward. has realized the benefit of what we call centralized um, database network, mm. you know. So, because instead of having databases in silos, now if you centralize, then it means that people can work from home and still access the database. Mm. And that is also another thing that is uh, on going the chart that is going to change. Mm. You know, um, Relationship management, yes, it's going to be a little bit of the social capital, which I call the face-to-face -face, mm. uh, interaction, and move more towards online. Mm. You communicate with your relationship manager, either by phone, by email, by WhatsApp, any of the uh, digital platforms uh, and seeing you face to face is going to reduce mm. um, <laughs> because as you said if this thing doesn't go by September if you're going to wear mask you know mm. for as you're doing of, some <laughs> in studio here so those yeah. are your in terms so, of, so, that, those are so some of deposit the mobilization will yeah. be a factor yeah. in yeah. terms of uh, the personnel that have to work from the office and will reduce. physical cash handling physical will also cash be handling will also uh, reduce uh, yes, as well. Reduce, Interesting. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ashagwa, what will be your top three uh, changes that we should uh, expect that is going to happen as in the new order of banking? Um, I, I suppose my top three would be, uh, from a bank's perspective, uh, which also affects customers invariably, is how the banks go about their credit appraisals and credit monitoring. 
um, that that definitely is going to have to change because the whole uh, ecosystem in terms of the assumptions one makes as to what makes a business attractive or not so attractive from a lending point of view will have to change mm. uh, because of the, the impacts of uh, COVID-19, a lot of which, by the way, remains uh, unknown. We're kind of still working through it as we go along. Then, of course, uh, we've spoken a lot about uh, technology and digitization this evening, but uh, that is going to be, in my view, another significant area of change, largely in the area of security. Because, again, as the volumes increase, as we're pushing more uh, through electronic channels, uh, there's also a need for greater and uh, more efficient security mechanisms because obviously the opportunity for uh, fraud and cyber attacks, et cetera, et cetera, also uh, increases. Uh, so that's another area uh, that one needs to look at. And then my third area will probably be the, the operational models which we banks uh, have been working. That has been changing for some time. Uh, uh, when I talk about operational models, I'm talking about the resourcing, the staff headcount, the branch network <coughs> systems, uh, and all of that. All that has to be uh, redesigned, so to speak, because again, if you are having less physical interaction or face-to-face -face interaction and you're moving more of your transactions into the uh, electronic sphere, uh, then you need to rethink uh, your business model. So for me, I think in addition to the three that Nana uh, spoke about these would be an additional three that I would suggest uh, be critical. Mm. I'll be joining the chief executive of AGI very soon also about in terms of his top three uh, expectation in terms of what we'll do. But we'll take a short break and uh, this is PM Express Business Edition, future of banking, what will change and how ready are you as a consumer? We'll be right back after this break. Welcome to PM Express Business Edition as we look at the future of banking in the midst of COVID-19, post-COVID-19, and what is going to change in banking. Is it about the deposit mobilization? Is it about the relationship management? Is it about the personnel? Is it about service provision in terms of what they will sell to you? Or everything will change, or maybe, listen, it will just be about business as usual. Visha Shagbo is the senior country partner at PwC uh, Ghana. Um, we also have the chief executive of AGI, also with us, uh, Chuma Kobwa. And Nana Utui Champong, a banking consultant, uh, having worked with a lot of banks and consulting and teaching us as well. So these people are well pleased to uh, discuss issues about banking and its future in the country. Such Chuma Kabwa, chief executive of AGI, let me also um, find out from you, in terms of what are the things that you're looking for to change? Or you think that, listen, it's about protection and observing the health protocols, and it will be normal? Well, I also expect that there, there will be some changes in the banking transactions uh, with, with the SMEs and with our businesses in general. Um, for example, uh, I expect that banks would now support SMEs uh, to invest in areas that is electronically uh, inclined and support their businesses. So, for example, if SMEs see that we are applying for facilities that relates to computers and uh, servers and things that will enable them to do a typical banking transaction using electronic means, and banks will not uh, uh, listen to them. This time, I hope they will listen to them because you need the customers, and the customers must be able to do business with electronically. Otherwise, you don't have a business with them. So I expect that there will be more support for SMEs in that area. I also expect that in terms of cash collection and cash deposit at banks, perhaps we should consider how we could make the interbank system work very well so that if you have a branch close to you of a particular bank, which you are going to be a customer of, you should be able to put this money in that bank and then automatically to go into you, into another bank and, and the system will take it. So with communication and physical visits to banks will be, will be important. Uh, and then I also expect that 
way of uh, monitoring facility will also be looked at because the way to monitor loan facilities is to always visit the customer and uh, have a good relationship with the customer, examine their books and so many things. Perhaps that will also change a little bit because the physical distancing protocols they probably not permit that. Mm. So, or even if it's to permit it, it will reduce to a very large extent. And, and I also expect that the banks themselves also, um, the kind of personnel they have, push more into people or train more uh, into people who can do business, uh, businesses using electronic means. So either their training models will change, they are kind of up for uh, training the bankers would would, would, would would divert a bit into more of this area, or you put people with an IT background and all that. And I also expect finally that there will be a lot more assistance to SME so that they will be able to do business with them in every possible area. That perhaps for the public it was not considered uh, mm. very practical. It looks like as a businessman, you're quite optimistic about the future, and it's great that to have that optimism from you. Uh, Mr. Visha Shabo, watching the banking space, do you think that in terms of the future of banking and with all these changes, um, the economy, the players, we are ready for this, or we will all struggle to catch up with this? Um, well, I think the banks are ready. Um, there, there are risks out there. There are risks that um, none of us are familiar with that the, the banks are going to have to contend with. Um, but those are environmental risks, so to speak, and they, they, they'll get through those. They'll have to deal with those. Um, I don't think anybody can be ready for this COVID-19 type situation, and we're all trying to react and learn as we go along. But fortunately, the banks are, 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 are strong, and um, they should be able to weather the storm. And just... Um, build on what they've been doing over the last few years uh, in terms of stronger uh, monitoring, stronger regulation, uh, better adherence to the rules, uh, the digitization drive, uh, and managing their capital and liquidity uh, better than maybe a few years ago. So overall, I think that um, uh, it, it can be done and it, it will be done. Mm. You, you, you're talking about managing their liquidity and then profit going forward. D do you think that, again, this future corona banking in terms of the future of banking and what this will mean would see dwindling profits or listen the banks know how to f fine tune things to get out of this and improve the bottom line and also improve credit extension to businesses yeah george i think that uh, those are the big questions uh the environment is quite significantly different from what it was before uh, and the risks are not fully known so in terms of profitability and liquidity the banks are certainly going to have to do a lot more in terms of monitoring and evaluating their exposures uh, and reacting to those quickly and maybe even putting in place preemptive uh, measures uh, but th that's all uh, to come that's all work in progress because nobody has been in this situation before uh, so there'll need to be quite a lot of work done to preserve profitability and to, to manage the credit. But uh, fortunately, the Bank of Ghana has given some leeway in terms of uh, the uh, liquidity requirements or the reserve requirements and the capital adequacy requirements, which should help the banks along the way. But that really is the area that I think the banks need to be focusing on going forward because it's a, it's a big unknown and they just have to try and uh, get ahead of the curve and uh, react very quickly as things evolve. So you, you, you believe that this future banking um, thing will benefit the economy in terms of the changes that has to be put in place? Well, those changes are designed to allow the banks to support the economy. So the reduction in the reserve requirements, the reduction in uh, capital adequacy requirements is designed to give the banks more leeway to support the economy specifically those SMEs that Seth uh, has been uh, talking about this evening. So all of those things are part of a bigger effort to support the economy. Um, but the key question is how the banks apply 
those additional funds, the liquidity, the additional liquidity, the additional uh, capital that's available to, de to be deployed, how they apply those and how they monitor the usage of those funds so that they, are, uh, uh, they, they come back, uh, that they are used for productive uh, endeavors and that they actually come back uh, in that we, we have a win-win because the economy is supported and the banks also do not lose their, their, their money. So I think that's the big issue, how you monitor all of that, how you track all of that, and how you ensure that it's successful at the end of the day. Mr. Shagba, as you round up in a minute, are you optimistic about this uh, future of banking with corona setting in? Or, listen, you think the crystal ball is still bleak? No, I, I, I think uh, we're optimistic. I'm optimistic uh, because uh, everything we've seen suggests that the banks are in a good place. Everything we've seen suggests that uh, some hard lessons have been learned from what has happened over the last few years. Uh, yes, we are in uh, unknown territory, but I believe the, bank working with, the banks working with their regulator will be able to navigate uh, the uncertainties as we go forward. But that's, mm. uh, from our perspective, the key area that needs to be focused mm. on. Hold on, don't go yet. Um, AGI, uh, Chief Executive, uh, in uh, a minute, future banking optimistic? Oh, I'm still optimistic. I'm optimistic because business has to go on. Uh, people will consume things, people will buy things, people will use things, so producers will produce. And they need the banking support to be able to do that. So as far as business is concerned, business will continue to be there, except that the mode of operation will change. That is the only thing. But as for business, it come back to normal. Now they are difficult. There's no doubt about it. And I think the future is so positive. Uh, and I have no doubt that when everything is uh, well and certain, uh, we'll come back to our normal situation. The mode of operation may change, but the critical components of business and banking to the machine. So I'm so optimistic. Mm, mm. Well, on then, Anna, I mean, for you, looking into the crystal ball, uh, are you optimistic about the future of banking? Yeah. Or you think that, listen, it's still early days here. We don't know what Corona will still inject us with. So uh, still looking to the crystal ball. No, uh, definitely there will be challenges. But overall, the uh, picture is good in the sense that in the long term, uh, banks will be able to cope with uh, the changes. Now, unfortunately, there are some um, sectors of the industry, of industry that are going to suffer. Um, they've suffered already. If you take the airline industry, for instance, the prediction is that it will take another two to three years before they get back to where they were before December 2019. Now, uh, since they are also customers of banks, then it means there will be an effect there. If you tell the hotel industries, especially the international ones, if international travel is not going to pick up for another two to three years, then it means the international hotels are also going to um, you know, suffer there. Mm -hmm. So uh, by and large, but I think um, you win some and you lose some. Mm. Now, in terms of the technology side, it's, <laughs> it's a win-win situation because uh, since you are now going to depend more on technology, then it means you're going to need more in terms of even staff and, mm. uh, that will be operating these systems and so on. Um, for the SMEs that um, is probably attached, Unfortunately, it's going to be the survivor of the fittest. Uh, mm. There will be definitely some minor casualties there. Uh, with the government, one billion uh, stimulus package being given to them, mm. some will be able to ride a storm, but mm. there may be a few casualties that but, won't be able but, to... No, no, it's good you're talking yeah. about casualties. And yeah. if you are investing more in technology, more virtual platforms, there are some who are worried about the fate of uh, workers. Human capital. Human capital, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the human capital, there the will be, but then adaptability becomes the norm that you got to be flexible, you got to be adaptable, and therefore, um, whatever your profession is, if you can adapt to the technology side of that profession, you, you'll be okay. Um, even on the manual work side, there will still be a need for 
uh, some of the human capital, but there will be challenges because as we move, even those developing robots have also doubled mm. their efforts to bring in more robots because uh, the artificial intelligence is mm. rising to such a level that now you'll be able to program a robot to do virtually anything that a human being could do. Mm. So th there are challenges there. Mm. And, and so population control is also another area. Not with your boys of banking, uh, Vish Ashabo is a senior country partner at PwC Ghana. Immense thanks for your time. I appreciate it so much. Uh, Sechuma Kabwa is the chief executive of the Association of Ghana Industries. I Thanks so much for your time this evening. I know Toy Champong is a banking consultant as we try to do justice to the future of banking and what Corona virus would do to that. We've uh, given our checklist and I know that some will say that, well, it's a tough time ahead. But some are saying that let's also be optimistic. Business edition PM Express, I know that debate will still go on in your homes. In a series of human-centered stories, we shine a light on some of the most basic innovative ideas that could help bring change and what the Ghana Climate Innovation Center is doing to scale up these ideas.